Okay, so we are now um, on the tail end of the hardest segment, the enemy uh, controller. If you remember in our enemy controller, we actually set up a patrol state and a chase state. And so what we're going to do on this uh, tutorial is we're going to set up the enemy to when he sees the player, he's going to run at him. And uh, when that happens, uh, he should chase him. And when you get out of that distance, he should go back to um, to back to regular patrol. And uh, there is going to be kind of a complication in that, and that he's going to walk off the edge here in just a second. We'll see that. Uh, this part is kind of uh, complicated, but then I don't know. Like I want to take my time and try to explain the logic behind what we are being asked for in each one of these segments. Uh, not just saying, hey, this is how you do it. If you want to know how to do it, well, then go look at the pictures the tutorial. Yes, this is going to be kind of a longer video, but um, I want to understand and I want you to understand what is happening here whenever we uh, do this. So uh, basically, we set up a enemy walk macro, if you remember, that looks like this. So there's a lot of stuff happening here. Figure out the direction of the enemy, flip the sprite image, set the velocity, and uh, set the walk animation for our enemy. Um, and so now what we need to do is we need to uh, figure out where the player is standing and figure out where the enemy is standing. And so what it's going to do is it's going. This is, we're going to set up a um, a unit that basically says where's the player standing? Is the player within? let's say three units of the enemy. If it is, then take the distance of the, or the X uh, vector, uh, wherever he is on the X vector, um, on that horizontal plane, and subtract that by our enemy, and then the enemy will move in towards it. So it'll be constantly updating that on where the player is standing, and um, where the uh, enemy is standing. Now, apparently what you need is a normalized value. So uh, it says because the enemy walk macro takes care of normalizing that va value, we can, we can just pass over that. So in other words, it's always gonna be one, whether it's positive one or negative one. So we don't have to worry about that. We just need to know the player position minus the uh, enemy position so let's go into our enemy go into alive go into patrol oh, I'm sorry not in patrol go back to alive and then go into chase so uh, when you get into the chase um, state see if I can back up a little bit I got all messed up there kind of move up a little bit all right so uh, we're going to start with we want to get uh, the position the position of the player. So get position, uh, transform, get position of get variable, uh, get application variable. Remember we set that up, the singleton principle of player. So get the variable of player. Get whoever's tag player in the application. It's only one thing that's ever going to be tagged that, our player. So get the position of the player and subtract that subtract that from your own position get position of yourself right so find the player subtract the position of yourself uh, and we're going to do this on the get x vector 2 we're going to tell it to now walk in that direction now if you remember we set up a super unit enemy walk and what that's going to do is it's going to go into the direction that it's supposed to walk so when you open that up remember there was an uh, input here and so we're going to normalize that value and then we're going to multiply that by the speed so that's how that works so back in the input of our um, chase animation so we're going to figure out where the player is standing we're going to figure out where you're standing and we're going to subtract the x value of that so that you move in his direction. So that's essentially how that works. So the enemy should start chasing the player when it gets close enough and we want it to stop whenever it escapes. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, save that real quick. Let's go to our enemy 
um, prefab. And let's add another uh, variable under speed. Uh, let's add a new variable called detection. Um, that's going to be a float. And let's say within three units. So when it detects the player within three units, it's going to start chasing it. And when it leaves that three units, then it's going to go back to patrol. Essentially, that's how that's going to work. So let's update that. Um, and now let's open the uh, live, go to uh, the difference between chase and patrol. So um, we're going to open the transition from patrol to chase. So make sure it's going an arrow, going from patrol to chase. And we're going to open this little transition. And so what we need this to do is, uh, if you remember, we calculate the distance between the player and the enemy. Uh, and trans, uh, transition, if it's lower, into the de detection radius. So um, this is going to work. Uh, so the transition is going to be very similar from a uh, leave that transition to a uh, go back to that transition. So uh, in other words, um, this is going to be very similar transitioning from one state to the other. It's just going to be one little change. So let's start with... Um, I think if we get the position of the player, so let's start with the player. Add unit, get position, get position of that application variable of the player, get variable application player. So find the player. And uh, let's uh, transform the position. So get the position of yourself. And then run that into a distance. Let's figure out what the distance is. So we're going to calculate that from uh, a vector 2. So A is you, yourself. B is the player. So enemy player and then we're going to run that let me scoot this over a little bit let's get that over there and uh, we're going to run that into a, um, a greater than or less than kind of uh, principle so uh, so from the distance of vector 2 that's going to go into less and we need to get the uh, object variable of detection so we made a variable in the object on the enemy uh, we need to get that uh, number so let's get oops sorry get variable I can spell get get object variable and there are two there we just need detection not speed and we're going to put that as B so a is the distance between you and the player B is the detection area, and if the if it walks into that area, if the player walks into that area and the distance is less than, than the detection radius, then we're going to do something. So if it's less than, we're going to trigger that transition. So let's make a branch here because you have a true and false statement. And we need a update event. So we want it to do this every frame. <sighs> update, come on. Update. And, uh, whoo, goodness, how, where are you going, dude? And if it is true, then we're going to trigger this transition. So uh, hopefully I explain that. You're getting the location of the player. Get the location of yourself. So get the position, get the position. And if you, it is within three frames by saying, okay, that detection variable was three. If it comes within three frames of you, so if the distance is less than three frames, then we want you to trigger this transition. And this is going to update every frame. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, okay, so let's call that uh, cal, uh, calculate distance from player and I'll change it to yellow because it's getting information again uh, that's just kind of the way I roll 
and uh, I'm not going to make a frame for that because it's just saying, hey, what's the detection of, of yourself? So, ah, we'll, we'll do it, whatever. Move the update up here, and we'll call this, um, what is, is distance, or how about within detection, question mark. So again, another yellow object. Okay, so is that within detection? Because if it's within detection, we want to do something. All right, so moving on to the transition. Now, uh, just real quickly, copy all of this. So select all of that and copy it. And then go back to the alive. So now we're going to do one little thing. So if it's, if it's um, within that, it's gonna start chasing it. But if you leave it, we need you to go back to patrol. So if I leave that detection um, radius uh, or the detection distance from the player to the enemy. I need you to go back to a patrol enemy. So what you do is you go into this other one and let's delete that because we already actually have that. Now there is one thing that needs to change and it's this one right here. So, ah, come on man. There we go. Alright, so uh, if you will click on that and right click, you can replace that with a greater to greater than greater than or equal to so let me just explain this just real quick because this is the same thing over here it's calculated distance from the player and if that distance is greater than the detection area or it's equal so I can be standing in within three frames but if I'm any less than that it's gonna chase me when I leave that it will leave the player alone so it will go back to that other transition that's what that is saying. So just really quickly, uh, let's test it out. Let's see if that works. Should work. Uh, but again, there is going to be a problem that I'm already aware of. All right, it's chasing me. All right, so it's like, hey, 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 hey. There you are. No, come here. Did you see that? It just walked off the side because it was chasing me. And now it's down there being stupid. We're going to have to fix that. We don't want it to walk off the edge when uh, it's chasing the player. So uh, apparently that's that's a really super easy transition. Um, I'm glad they put this out because I would be so lost on how to fix that if it weren't for their little tutorial here. Let's make another transition from, uh, I'm sorry, from chase to patrol. Whenever we're in a chase, and if I'm chasing and I come up to the edge, so you remember we had a little macro that was already set up for when the player uh, reach, excuse me, when the enemy reaches the edge. Just grab that little macro or select it from the list. You can do it that way too. Enemy reach edge, and that should take care of the enemy uh, coming to the edge and falling off the side. Let's just really quickly check that and make sure he's not going to chase us off the side. Eh, come here. Uh 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 uh. See. See that? And so he'll stop. Oh, oh, and I died. <laughs> but see, he won't come off the side, so that's what matters. Come here, stupid. And yeah, 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 he likes me. He should go back to patrolling now. Yeah. So that's what we want him to do. He's not going to fall off the edge, even if he's chasing the player. So uh, that was just a little fix. Now, uh, that was the hardest part. I understand that probably took a little while to sit through all of that on just the enemy. But um, again, that's supposedly in this uh, tutorial, that was the hardest part. So um, if uh, you need help on that, like something is not working right, uh, what I'd recommend just really quickly, because uh, I did have to do this one time, like something is not right. You just click this uh, a full resolution link right here so you can just go to a new window and you can zoom in on these and see if you can figure out what isn't right. So. That's helpful looking at your graphs, but understand why something is happening, I think is more important. So anyway, all right, so um, we're gonna move into, guys, the rest of this is downhill. Seriously, I had some super fun. Like this is a part that I didn't really enjoy that much, but the, the next part of this, I'm like, ah, oh, okay, yeah, I got it. So we're gonna go into this next part, which I believe is working with um, uh, projectiles. So we're gonna pick up that projectile and, and be able to throw it at enemies. We'll text that or check that out in the next video.